told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken... Hello there. Sully here, the retired tech gang. Welcome to Transitions. If you're new to my channel, or if you're a returning visitor and not yet subscribed, please just take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Now we moved it. It's still there. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. Well... If you're no stranger to my channel, you already know that I love music. I do have extremely eclectic tastes, and I appreciate greatly the music of people, in particular, who tend to be excluded from the top ten charts. Now, I love all kinds of music. Folk, rock, jazz, classical country, space music, bluegrass, even hip-hop, you name it, you'll find it in my library. But my favorite category of music and I really hate to pigeonhole any particular genre, but my favorite music is folk music. Now, much of today's acoustic music, especially, is deeply influenced by the folk musicians who have come before. And the same can be said of a lot of rock and even a lot of hip-hop. Now, the so-called golden age of folk music was probably in the mid-60s. Pop folk, which was you know, kind of smarmy and very middle of the road, was found on mainstream radio stations while the so-called underground stations were playing topical folk music, alongside of the groundbreaking so-called progressive rock of the era. And, by the way, that term progressive has become pigeonholed. Uh, and when you think of progressive, you think of bands such as Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and the Alan Parsons Project, Kansas, bands of that ilk. But a lot of the groundbreaking rock bands were uh, considered progressive. And from that genre of progressive rock sang the so-called jazz rock fusion, bands such as Return of Forever, Spyro Gyra, others like that. That became a category, by the way, which many music fans, and especially music critics, kind of mistook for a urinal. But while this was going on, the folk musicians slogged on. And there was quite a folk music scene in Toronto. Musicians from all around Canada and the United States flocked to Toronto, probably because it was getting a little bit too crowded in Boston, that scene produced the likes of Joni Mitchell, Gordon Lightfoot, Ian and Sylvia Thompson, and Stan Rogers. Now, Stan Rogers is probably the least known of these folk musicians. He was an up-and-coming performer on the cusp of fame when he was tragically killed in an airline accident in 1983 at the age of 33. Stanley Allison Rogers was born in Hamilton, Ontario. He was the eldest son of Nathan and Valerie Bushnell Rogers. They were from the Maritimes, and they relocated to Ontario in search of work, shortly after they were married in 1948. And although Stan Rogers was raised in Binbrook, Ontario, he often spent his summers visiting his family in Guysborough County, Nova Scotia. And that greatly influenced the music, as I'll talk about later. Rogers was noted for a rich baritone voice, and his traditional sounding songs were frequently inspired by Canadian history and the daily lives of working people, especially those from the fishing villages of the maritime provinces. And it was there that he became familiar with the way of life in the maritimes, and that influence had a profound effect on his subsequent musical development. He was interested in music from an early age, uh, reportedly beginning to sing shortly after learning how to speak. His first guitar was a small hand-built instrument, which was built by his uncle, Lee Bushell, when he was five years of age. Rogers described that instrument as made from birch plywood and walnut rod and registered as a lethal weapon. He was exposed to a variety of musical influences, but among the most lasting were the country and western songs, which his uncles would sing to our family get-togethers. 
and throughout his childhood he would practice his singing and playing along with his brother Garnet. While Rogers was attending Salt Fleet High School in Stony Crook, Ontario, he started to meet other young people interested in folk music. Although at this time he was dabbling in rock and roll, singing and playing bass guitar in garage bands such as Stanley and the Livingstones and the Hobbits. After high school, Rogers briefly attended both McMaster University and Trent University, where he performed in small venues with other student musicians. He signed with RCA Records in 1970 and recorded two singles called Here's to You, Santa Claus in 1970 and The Fat Girl Rag in 1971. In 1973, Rogers recorded three singles for Polygram, Three Pennies, Guysboro Train, and Past 50. Rogers, however, was disillusioned with the whole recording process. He felt that the record companies were trying to make him into something that he wasn't. And while on a trip to New York to work out a record deal, Stan went for a long walk. He wound up walking along the East River, and a familiar smell filled his head. It reminded him of home and of what he was. He left New York, returned to Ontario, and never looked back. Stan recorded his debut album called Fogarty's Cove in 1976. It was released on an independent label called Barnswaller Records. And the album's subject matter dealt almost entirely with life in Maritime Canada, and it was an immediate success. He then formed Fogarty's Code Music and bought the Barn Swallow label during the production of his second album, Turnaround, which allowed him to release his own albums. Rogers' songs often had a Celtic feel, which was due in part to his frequent use of Dadgad guitar tuning. He regularly used his 12-string guitar, which was built by his friend, William Grit Laskin. His best known pieces include Northwest Passage, Barris Privateers, The Mary Ellen Carter, Make and Break Harbor, The Idiot, Fogarty's Cove, and White Squall. Rogers died alongside 22 other passengers, most likely of smoke inhalation, on June 2, 1983, while traveling on Air Canada Flight 797 after performing at the Kerrville Folk Festival near Dallas, Texas. The airliner was flying from Dallas to Toronto and then to Montreal when a fire of unknown ignition source within the uh, washroom of the aircraft forced it to make an emergency landing at the Greater Cincinnati Airport in Northern Kentucky. The fire broke out midair over Indianapolis. The plane was rerouted to emergency landing at the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Airport. The fire continued to rage and produced so much smoke that the pilot could not see his controls during the landing. He was guided to the runway by another pilot. The landing was successful. However, 23 people died from smoke inhalation. The first signs of trouble on Air Canada 797, which was a DC-9 flying at 30,000 feet en route from Dallas to Toronto, were the wisps of smoke wafting out of the rear lavatory. Soon, thick black smoke started to fill the cabin and the plane began an emergency descent. Barely able to see the instrument panel because of the smoke, the pilot landed the plane at the Cincinnati airport. But shortly after the doors and emergency exits were open, the cabin erupted in a flash fire before everyone could get out. There were initially no visible flames, and after attempts to extinguish the fire were unsuccessful, smoke filled the cabin. Upon landing, the plane's doors were open, allowing the five crew and 18 of the passengers to escape. But approximately 60 to 90 seconds into the evacuation, the oxygen rushing in from outside caused a flash fire. Stan had initially been one of the passengers who was able to escape, but at some point he re-entered the plane to assist in the effort to help others escape. The FAA subsequently mandated that aircraft laboratories be equipped with smoke detectors and automatic fire extinguishers. Within five years, all jetliners were retrofitted with fire blocking layers on seat cushions and floor lighting the lead passengers to exit in dead smoke. Planes built after 1988 have had more flame-resistant interior materials. Rogers' legacy includes his recording, songbook, and plays for which he was commissioned to write music. His songs are still frequently covered by other musicians and are perennial favorites of Canadian campfires and song circles. Members of Rogers' band, including his brother Garnet, continue to be active performers and form a significant part of the fabric of contemporary Canadian folk music. Following his death, he was nominated for the 1984 Juno Awards in the category for Best Male Vocalist. That same year, he was awarded the Diplôme d'Honneur of the Canadian Conference of the Arts. 
1994, his posthumous live album, Home in Halifax, was likewise nominated for Best Roots and Traditional Album. His widow, Ariel, continues to oversee his estate and legacy. His music and lyrics have been featured in numerous written publications and films. For instance, his lyrics have appeared in school poetry books, taking their place alongside acknowledged classics. His song, Northwest Passage, was featured in the last episode of the TV show Due South. His songs, Barrett's Privateers and Watching the Apples Grow, have been previously featured. Barrett's Privateers has also been used extensively in promotion ads for Alexander Keith's Sale. In the 2005 CTV Me for TV movie of the life of Terry Fox, Roger's turnaround is the music over the closing shot. As the movie ends, Fox is depicted alone, standing up on a hill while the lyric, and yours was the open road, the bitter song, the heavy load that I'll never share, though the offer's still there. Every time you turn around, forges a link between these Canadian icons. Many of the songs on the albums, Northwest Passage and From Fresh Water, refer to events in Canadian history. The Stan Rogers Folk Festival is held every year in Canso, Nova Scotia. And in 1995, several artists performed two nights of concerts at Halifax's Rebecca Cohn Auditorium, which were released on an album that year as Remembering Stan Rogers. Rogers is also a lasting fixture of the Canadian Folk Festival Summer Folk, held annually in Owen Sound, Ontario, where the main stage and amphitheater are dedicated as the Stan Rogers Memorial Canopy. The festival is firmly fixed in tradition, with Rogers' song, The Mary Ellen Carter, being sung by all involved, including the audience and a medley of acts at the festival. At the Canmore Folk Festival, Alberta's longest-running folk music festival, performers take to the Stan Rogers Memorial Stage, which is the festival's main stage. Stan's son, Nathan Rogers, is also an established Canadian folk artist with a voice and lyrical acumen similar to his father's. He has released two critically acclaimed solo discs and tours internationally as a solo act in the trio Dry Bones. Stan's songs have been covered many times by various artists from various genres. Barris Privateers, for instance, is a particular favorite of both metal bands and soccer hooligans everywhere. Northwest Passage is often referred to as the alternate Canadian national anthem. And folk musicians and, and wannabes like me <clears throat> can play the Mary Ellen Carter in our sleep. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a labor of love for me. I rank Stan Rogers right up there as among my favorite folk performers, along with the likes of Tom Rush, Pete Seeger, uh, Joni Mitchell. Phil Oaks, Bob Dylan. If you uh, just look through my record collection, you will find all of Stan's CDs, and I wish I still had them on vinyl, too. But if you want to experience the music of this great Canadian icon, I'll include a few links in my descriptions, or you can just Google Stan Rogers. You won't be disappointed, I guarantee. Until next time, for Transitions, I'm Sully, the Retired Tanker Yanker. Safe and happy travels. Bits and pieces you offer Of your life I didn't think they meant a lot or said much for you And all the chances to follow Didn't make a lot of sense When stacked against the choices you made For yours was the open road The bitter song, the heavy load That I couldn't share Though the offer was there Every time you turned around Now it's not like you made out To hang around Although you know I made some sounds To show that I cared 
And when it looked like you heard the call I didn't say a lot Although I could have said much more Had I dared But yours was the open road The bitter song The heavy load that I couldn't share Though the offer was there Every time you turned around And if I had followed A little